hello again. We are back in the stop business models and now we are actually diving into what kind of business models are there. Is there like a, a indefinite long list of business models or can we learn from uh, what's already been defined here? Let's start very much at the beginning uh, of economies or business as such. We had a supplier who is delivering something, a product or a service to a customer, and maybe there was a feedback. There was a big power in um, the position of the supplier, as you can see, with a much bigger bubble and a much smaller um, bubble for the customer. Well, this is how it used to be. And now this relationship has changed a lot. Um, you see that the supplier bubble has you know, shrinked quite a bit and the customer has a much bigger power um, that also is embedded in um, information flow that goes both ways. So there is a bi-directional exchange of information, exchange of knowledge um, with the technologies we have to today also in real time. And it is happening in all the different phases uh, of the customer journey, before the sale even, during the sale and after, of course. And it also happens in different formats. It happens face-to-face -face, um, with your employees that are facing the interaction to the customer, but it also happens again in a digital way across the internet and uh, across very big distances. So this is a completely new setup that is much more um, complex again, and it is yeah, happening on different levels. So it's uh, a lot uh, to master and also to design uh, how this should look like if you're building something like this from scratch. So let's dive into some of the um, business model patterns. And I encourage you to really dive into these resources that you um, have been sent as well to you. Uh, this is coming from the St. Gallen Business Model Navigator. There's 55 business model patterns that will help you um, yeah, get a grip of what different options you actually have. And the very first one is the bait and hook business model that is um, one that maybe doesn't sound so familiar uh, based on its title, but uh, if you hear about what it actually is about, uh, it's, it's also called the razor and blade business model. And it's a model where um, you are offering a basic product uh, that you are giving away at a very low cost, sometimes even for free as the bait. And then you are charging much, much bigger amounts um, for refills, for, for anything that is associated to those products and services later on as the hook, because you're already uh, been hooked basically to that uh, brand or to that product, um, you don't change easily, easily to something else. Very um, known examples, the razors and the blades, um, Man, no, you know, the razors are usually the cheaper parts, but when you have to buy uh, more blades, uh, that's where you really have to look deeper into your pockets. Um, it's also, it used to be at least with cell phones and uh, the airtime on the phone. Um, very um, obvious one is also about uh, computer printers that you buy that are usually a very fraction of the cost actually of the, the refills and the cartridges that you have to buy to be able to, to print anything on the long run. Next one is here, the bricks and clicks model is a, an easy one. Again, it's, you know, you are selling something in a store, in a physical store, and the clicks part is then, you know, you are just taking that presence that you have in the real world and putting it, putting it online as an e-shop. Nice and easy to understand. Um, more complex and of course uh, work in extensive if it's about 
a chain of stores, for example, um, a lot of uh, effort has to go into that, a lot of investment as well, even if it's a small store. So yeah, this is a digitization, I would say, uh, being able to put a process that you have been doing um, traditionally from human to human uh, to uh, yeah, mirror that in a digital process as well. I very much am fond of collective business models. That's where you know, business organizations uh, come together or also you know, consumers come together. And because of their large number, they're able to receive benefits in terms of lower prices or different kind of conditions uh, that you will be granted uh, because of the large number of units that are exchanged across the table. Cutting out the middleman is another one uh, that's interesting. Um, part of disruption that's going on as well, where you know whole value chains are changing. And the title says it all. Um, you are cutting out organizations that have been in between um, you and your end consumer maybe um, and uh, that means there's more profits for the parties that remain there of course the internet has been a major force for this um, allowing customers to directly go to the producers and that changes of course a lot in terms of uh, prices quality of services received, maybe uh, other, you know, factors that come into play, depending on uh, the type of product we are talking about. Here's another one, revenue sharing. It's a model where um, different kind of stakeholders, sometimes even competitors come together and share the revenue. Um, this is again a model that I really recommend and enjoy to, to design because it's about a symbiotic uh, collaboration between all the stakeholders that are involved. And it is for the benefit of the customer who receives an increased value. This is the model that is behind those 55 business model patterns. Um, maybe not the right words for explaining this, but it's this, the what, the who, the how, and the value that allows you to uh, think of patterns of how that exchange between you, your competition, your other stakeholders, your uh, channel partners uh, work together to deliver that value to your customer. I really recommend you to take the time to read into those business model patterns, because this is only the basis actually of what you will need um, in the end to create your own business model uh, as such. It will be a combination of um, yeah, different patterns here. And um, to be honest, there's a lot of choice that can be applied here already. Um, and you can actually select based on the product or the idea you're working upon um, and also your why's, your motivation, um, which of the business model patterns fit to that idea and to the team and to the philosophy that's behind um, the motivation of you creating that very product or service. This is another recommendation I have here and you have received the link to this very article that I'm quoting here. It's about 10 new business models for this decade. That's the title here. And I would like to just uh, briefly uh, share a few of the business models that are described here. Um, again, with examples and as uh, an example to look at it in a little more deeper 
uh, fashion, I would like to uh, point you out to the markets that are conversations as a business model. And in this article, it actually gives you, um, yeah, a ready-made example, actually, how this will look like if you fill it into the business model canvas already. And the example that is used here, uh, markets are conversations. It's when companies um, decide to put their, let's say, new product creation out there and allow uh, the market to take part of it, part, to take part in it. So it's like, uh, for example, modular or new, new beta products and services um, are in the center of this. And then you could build um, the rest of it around that value proposition. Um, it will make sense to you um, very easily in that way. And it, this example can inspire you actually um, for your own product service and in your own contact, context. It's not that easy to make sense in with different business model patterns, but uh, this example here um, is a very uh, spelled out one that will definitely speed up the understanding if you're completely new to that topic. Here's five more of those business models that are described here. And uh, yeah, dive into them, look at the companies and the concepts that stand behind them. Thank you very much. This was a very short introduction. Um, I am aware that you need to take more time to dive into this. And as I've said in another uh, video already, please take the time here to distribute um, this research work uh, within your team. It is very important also that everybody is engaged in selecting um, and creating the first ideas of you know, how a business model can look like. So this is the time to do that. And um, yes, write down your questions. Uh, take the time right now as well to 